Good morning, everyone. Um, it's great to be here. Just after listening to what um, the previous speakers have said, I have to agree with a lot of that. Uh, I keep hearing things that resonate with my own career as well, and especially about passion. So one thing archaeologists and people who work in heritage have is a lot of passion. Um, now, I've been working as an archaeologist for 15 years now, and it was good to do this presentation because I got to think about all the things I've been doing in that time. I actually started off at the University of Otago when I was getting my degree. I worked as a tutor and a field demonstrator. Then I worked for Southern Pacific Archaeological Research as a researcher. And after that, I worked for Opus, which is now WSP, as a consultant. Then for Heritage New Zealand as a regional archaeologist. And for the last four years, I've been working for NICTA. Um, now, NICTA was created after the 2016 earthquake in Kaikoura. As you'll all know, there was a heck of a lot of damage that happened along the coastline. There were big slips, the road got destroyed, um, the rail system also got knocked out, and there were 195 known archaeological sites within that project footprint. And so a team of archaeologists was needed in order to take care and manage all those sites. And so I was brought in to be the Archaeological Finds and Quality Manager. So it's quite a long title, but what it essentially means is all the stuff that we found in the field and it was brought into our laboratory facilities, I looked after it. So we had about 11,000 samples that came in. That includes soil samples and artifacts and all kinds of things. And the quality part of my job was overseeing um, the processes and making sure that people were following our guidelines because we had quite a large team of up to about 30 archaeologists working um, at any given time. So we just had to make sure everybody understood how to work. So I thought I'd just go through a quick rundown on um, what archaeology is. I'm sure you've all seen movies. It's very popular nowadays to have an archaeologist in there. Um, most people think that we work with dinosaurs or dig up dinosaurs. We do not do that. I would happily excavate a dinosaur given the opportunity, but that's a paleontologist's job. Um, what we do spend a lot of time doing is working out in the field or working in offices, either writing reports or, as that poor guy over there is doing, data analysis. Um, but we do get to go out and do plenty of exciting things. So one of the key things that we do usually at the beginning of any sort of project is um, surveying. So these are a couple of jobs that I've been out on. Um, the one on the top left, uh, that's some midden that got uplifted um, out in the Catlins. And that's me in a rock shelter out at Lake Roxborough. That's Andy down there with some tailings that came from gold mining. And um, that's at Waitahuna with a part from a stamper battery. So um, we had to go around and find, usually it's identifying archaeological sites or ones that have already been identified. We go out and see what condition they're in and update our um, records. We also dig. Everybody knows we dig. Uh, a lot of the time we actually follow an excavator around, so big machinery on um, jobs, especially on roading jobs and projects like that. But then also there's a lot of hand excavation, so that's not exaggerated. Archaeology is a pretty physical job. Um, these are a couple of the digs I've been on. The one on the top left there is at Kawatiri. That's a, a field school that I was, I was running that particular team. Um, the top right, that's actually one of our nectar projects that's out at the Pines. And we've got Kathleen and Elsa there, and they're excavating a um, flaking floor, which was a really interesting flaking floor too. Uh, down the bottom left, that's me with Hiriri and Mika working at Wairau Bar, which is one of the earliest and most exciting sites in the country. And if you've ever been into Canterbury Museum, you would have seen some of the material that came from that site. It's um, pretty clear. <laughs> and then down the bottom right is Andy, who actually excavated that entire trench with a shovel by hand. So there were no mechanical excavators out at Cook's Cove and Tolaga Bay. We had to dig everything by hand. And it's very lucky that he comes from a farming background because he was able to manage that quite well. So he's very proud. Um, we do a lot of recording. So in the field, um, that's me at the top there, trying to handle a lot of paperwork. So we're often writing down what we're finding. We keep field books. We keep um, many, many notes. As you'll know, well, as you could guess, when we excavate, we're essentially destroying a site. So we have to keep it, we preserve it by record. So preservation by record is very important to us. So we keep lots of um, notes, we keep field books. Um, down in the picture there, you can see Emma, she's doing a drawing. So there's a, a frame there and they're trying to capture the lithic floor, so the stone floor that we've got, and they have to keep, keep a record of that so we can try and interpret what was happening in space and in time. 
and then on the left, those are artifacts that actually came out of the pines, which I showed you in the previous slide. So we've got a beautiful little rough out of an adze up in the top left there. There's some obsidian in the top right. There's two um, fish hooks and some adze fragments. Um, a couple of stone cores, which they break flakes off, which make cutting tools. And then down the bottom in the centre, it looks like a simple stone, but that's a hydroglossular garnet hammer stone. Very special. Okay. Um, we analyse. So everything that comes in out of the field, we have to figure out what does it all mean. So we take it back to our laboratory or facilities and we process it. So this is um, part of my team working in the Nectar Lab. We've got Terry on the left hand side there. Um, from those 11,000 samples we had to process um, mostly a lot of middens. So and midden is food refuse. And that's Terry going through a bag of beautiful fish bone from Waipapa Point. So she's actually separating out all the identifiable pieces of fish bone and then she goes through and she can tell us what type of fish were there. So, and um, she actually identified 29,000 fish bones from our sites. So we have quite a large assemblage. And that's me and the rest of the team. I'm looking for um, worked bone and artifacts and amongst bird bones there. And then we've got um, Dan and Tori down the back who are working on our lithic assemblages. So they're identifying all the stone tools that we have. Um, we write a lot, okay, so sure we get to dig, it's fantastic, and we get to do other fun things, but we spend a lot of our time writing, either assessments which we prepare for Heritage New Zealand in order to get an authority to go out and dig, um, or we hope to write things like journal articles so that we can tell people what we've been finding and other archaeologists can have an appreciation of what's happening and relate it to their own work, and um, yeah, also lots and lots of reports, lots of reports. So I love my job. It's a fantastic one. I get to travel all around the country. I've worked from the top of the North Island to Fivo Strait down the bottom of the South Island. I've been quite lucky and privileged in working on a lot of very large scale excavations. And my passion is for Māori archaeology, um, partly because I am Māori, but also because it's just really interesting and exciting to get an understanding of what happens in our country, how our culture was formed, and um, yes, yeah, so that's what makes it fantastic. You get lots of variation in the job. There's always new projects coming up. You can be, um, you can be a jack of all trades, so you can learn a lot of different things, but everyone usually picks up on one thing that they want to specialise in. So for me, that's archaeozoology. So I'm, I specialise in shell and animal bones and that form of identification, and also in um, Māori tangatū tūtūtū, so artefacts. Um, yeah, and then of course you can work in different sectors, academia, you can work for government, like Dock or Heritage New Zealand, and there's also commercial work where that's when you end up mostly following diggers around and writing lots of reports. Um, but the best thing, of course, is um, learning about our past and our culture, and also working with people and communities, because in the end, that's what archaeology is really about. It's about the people, and it's about our past. And um, I was particularly lucky working with Nectar, since we um, got to work in closely with the local Runanga. Um, and actually at the end of the project, which just finished in December last year, we got to hand back all of the, the taonga that we collected and all the taonga tūturu, and um, they actually asked me to lead the procession onto the marae to return, to repatriate all of our finds. So that's uh, me leading our team on, and then the bottom left there is in Takahanga Marae in the Whareinui, um, where everyone came in to have a look because they'd never had such a thing happen before. Like this isn't very common to actually have everything returned to the marae and not go straight to the museum. So it's been a wonderful working relationship there. And um, they, they honoured us by giving us um, sections of whalebone to take home. And um, so we would have a connection to the place. So that's what that ceremony is down the bottom there. Now how do you become an archaeologist? Well I've got to say university, so <laughs> you need to go and study anthropology, and in anthropology, of course, that's when you learn archaeology. Um, there are lots of interesting groups that you can join, uh, so lots of social groups, and it's important to go and participate in events. I mean, if you're studying, go see what's happening, what people are doing. Don't be afraid to ask questions. There are lots of archaeologists around, and um, well, when you're at campuses, and actually in Christchurch, there are a lot of us too. Yeah, so um, yeah, don't be afraid to ask questions. We love questions, we love answering them, it's fun. Um, and then one of the key things I learned when I was at uni is volunteer. So that I think is one of the key ways that I actually got to having my job or where I am currently because when the, the lecturers would say, does anyone want to help out on um, you know, a surveying exercise? My hand was straight up in the air. When they asked if someone needed help doing midden analysis, my hand was up in the air. 
And so I, I would turn up, I would help out, I would learn new skills, and then when it came to summer, when they had an excavation, the first person that asked to go was me. And so I got to go on lots of amazing excavations and saw sites that many people don't get an opportunity to see, and it was really fantastic. And it taught me many excavation skills and gave me a great appreciation of um, Māori archaeology in particular and historic archaeology as well. And um, I think that was one of the best things I could have done because it's helped me to get right through my career. So, yeah, but definitely have passion, give it a go, don't be afraid. It's, um, it's a very fun and exciting career. So, thank you.